force on continuous flow of mass. So far, we usually consider just one object moving. For example, there is just one ball hitting on the wall and come back. Then we can use F equals to mv minus mu over t. And the t refer to the duration time of impact for the ball touching on the wall in this situation. What if we have more than one ball hitting the, the wall one by one? Can we still use this kind of equation to find the value? The answer is we can. We can still use f equals to mv minus mu over t in this case. But this time, we have to group the time and the mass together. So that the m over t becomes the mass flow rate, the m over t. So it can be used for a lot of bullets hitting on the wall, or we throw a lot of the ball on the wall with the same speed, or even water flow out, or fit some fuel flow out. Let's consider the example. We have a rifle for a certain mass with the bullet coming out x shot per second. So let's find the average force acting on the rifle. How to find it? The average force on the rifle should be on the left. And because this force is come from the bullet, so they are action and reaction pair. So we can focus on the bullet in order to find this. So now the equation here is referred to the bullet. When I talk about the bullet, 10 gram, we have to change it to kg. So now because we have x sort of bullet coming out in one second, so the m over t will be this value. And actually, this is the f on the bullet. But because we know that they are action and reaction pair, so the average force acting on rifle is also the same value, but towards left. Let's consider another example here. We have a rocket ejecting some fuel. We can also use this idea to find out the force related to it. So let's find the thrust here, which is the force on the rocket. Now once again, because the force on the rocket and the force on the field are action and reaction pair, so they will have the same magnitude, same value. So let's see here, we considering the field coming out and with the certain speed of it. Because originally the field is not moving, so the u is zero. Okay, so we can use it to find the force. Then, how about the acceleration? If we want to find the acceleration, you should know that the force here is not the only force experienced by the rocket, but also its own weight. So I've marked the mg on the rocket also. So if we want to find the acceleration, we have to consider f net, so that we have used to use the force in part a minus its own weight in order to find the acceleration. Let's consider this example. This is quite a complicated example. We have a belt to carry some sand on it in order to make it move. And it takes some time for the sand to accelerate so that it will get the same velocity as the belt at the end. If you're not quite sure what's going on here, I would like to show you a video. This is a Lego model. You can see a lot of beams moving on the belt, and so the belt bring them move to the left. This is the model here. It's a little bit different from the one in the question, but the idea is exactly the same. Here we have a belt, we let some sand on it. So its initial horizontal velocity will be zero. And the belt will bring them move so that it will accelerate and finally attain the same speed as the belt. Which force acts on the sand to give the acceleration? Let's think of it. What kind of force brings the sand to move to the left? Yes, it's friction. So it's the friction between the sand and the belt to bring them move. Then what should be the direction of the friction? The sand 
will move to the left, so the force that brings them to the left is the friction. So the friction is also towards the left in this case. If you get the part A1 and 2, let's find the value of this force. So what is the force? We can use mv minus mu over t, and because we have lots of sand adding on it, so it is the rate of change of mass. Because it's 2.4 per minute, so we have to over 60 in order to get the value correctly. Now, let's go to the part B. What is the horizontal force to keep the bells move? What does it mean? Now, because there is a friction acting on the sand, so at the same time, this friction is also acting on the belt in the opposite direction. So you can see the red arrow here. And that means we have to provide a opposite direction force in order to move the belt with a uniform velocity. So, because it's a uniform velocity, so the force here should be the same as the force that opposes the belt to move, which is the friction, 0 0.14. Part C, we have to consider the VT graph of the sand and the belt. Now, so let's put down the axis of the VT graph first. What is the VT graph for the belt? Because it is moving with a uniform speed of 3.5 meters per second, so it's just a straight line, the blue straight line here represents the belt. The sand, because the initial velocity of the sand horizontally is zero, so it starts from zero, and finally it will attain the same speed at the belt. So this is the VT graph for the sand. What's the distance moved by the sand in order to attain that speed? Which is the red area as shown here? The question tells us that the belt has moved 40 meter. So we know that the area for the belt is 14. So the area of the sand is just half of the area for the belt. So we can use this relationship. We can find the distance moved by the sand in order to reach the 3.5 meter per second. Then because we have this VT graph, in order to find the acceleration, it's easy. Firstly, we have to find the T by using the area 14. Okay, after we got the T, then we can use the slope. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So here, it is 3.5 minus 0 over 4 minus 0. We can use this to get the acceleration of the sand also. This question is quite complicated. If you can't understand at the first moment, it's quite normal. So try to digest it and you can review this video again in order to understand the full picture of this question.